Satan, Lucifer, Apollyon, the evil one, Beelzebub, the father of lies. Whatever name you want to call him, never forget this. The devil is hungry and he's hungry for you. Number one, the devil cannot force you to sin. The Bible puts it like this, therefore submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. This might shock some of you, but no one has the right to ever say, Satan made me do it. Sometimes when I go through my comments on my YouTube section, I notice people saying, the devil made me sin, the devil led me into this sin. But the truth is this, the devil has no power to make you sin. Oh yes, he can dangle bait in front of you. At times he might even whisper temptations into your ear, but Satan has no power to force you into sin. And the Bible's clear, if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Number two, the devil cannot be in two places at once. It is only God who is omnipresent. In other words, it is only God who can be everywhere all the time. The Bible says he fills the heavens and the earth. But oh yes, the devil is still very active. Okay, he can only be in one place at a time. But did you know this? The devil has scattered an army of demons across the face of this entire earth. And did you know this too? Anyone who is not born again, anyone who has not yet put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ is actually under the influence of Satan. So just be careful who you listen to on TikTok. Be careful what movies you watch on Netflix. Be careful what channels you subscribe to because if that person has not yet been born from above, has put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, well Satan has a hand on what that person is doing and you might just be listening to the ideas of the evil one himself. Jesus once said this about those who reject him, you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. So in other words, if you have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and you're watching this video right now, your dad is the devil. But if you've put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the marvelous truth of the Bible is this, that God adopts the devil's children. Those who have their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ also become sons and daughters of the Most High God. Number three, the devil cannot read minds. Did you know this? The Bible says this, for you alone talking about God know the hearts of all the sons of men. Now, the deceiver will actually try and deceive you to try and make you think that he has greater powers than he does. Sometimes he'll make you think that he has powers that are in line with God. But the Bible's very clear. It is only God who can see our thought life. It is only God who searches the depths of our hearts. May I say something a little bit controversial? I believe that many Christians have an unhealthy view of the devil. Now I could be totally wrong about this, but I personally think many Christians sort of polarize their views of the devil. On one extreme, we've got the Christians who is all they seem to do is preach about devils and demons. They're terrified of them and they're constantly preaching against the demons. Every single sermon is marinated in demonology. And so what does that breed? It breeds a whole bunch of Christians that walk around looking, is that man demon possessed? Is that lady demon possessed? Is that person filled with the spirit of Satan? And people are constantly turning around, paranoid. But then on the other polar extreme, we have those Christians who are fast asleep and they never think about the devil. They never think that demons are around and they could be active in this world. They just sort of don't want to think about anything that makes them feel uncomfortable. But one of the names of Satan that I mentioned before was Apollyon. And Apollyon means destroyer of souls. And those Christians need to wake up and know that there is a roaring, vicious, cruel lion which is waiting to destroy Christians, which is waiting to devour people. So my dear friends, let none of us have a wrong view of the devil. Let none of us be cocky towards the evil one. If the archangel himself, Michael, was not cocky and said, no, let the Lord rebuke you, well then let you and I, who are just human flesh, let us realize that he is quite an enemy. But at the same time, let us not give the devil more credit than his due. The devil cannot read minds. He does not have the same powers of God. And in a moment's time, I'm gonna to reveal to you why we should never ever fear the devil. 
devil. Number four, the devil cannot do anything without God's permission first. God is sovereign over all things. In other words, he's in control of everything in this world. And let me tell you something, this teaching that God is sovereign has caused more arguments than anything else in the whole history of the church. Well, at least in my humble opinion, it's caused a lot of arguments. Charles Spurgeon once puts it like this, men will allow God to be everywhere but on his throne. And it's true, isn't it? We love God, the creator, when we look at the beautiful natural world and all of his design. We praise God, we love him for that. We love God, the forgiver, when we look at the cross and we know that Jesus shed his blood on the cross and that was God's wonderful design, his plan of salvation to save us. We say, thank you, Lord. We even love God when we search into the depths of his wisdom and we read the scripture and we know that this book, the Bible, is something different. It's alive, it's living, it's wise. But there's one point that many men do not like. The moment you look a man in the face and you say God is sovereign over all things, that's when that man decides it's time for me to get off the boat. But the truth is this. Even Satan is under God's rulership. The devil is on God's lead and he knows, he knows that he's only got a short amount of time to do what he wants, but the Lord has given him a sort of freedom to wreak havoc. But the devil knows that soon his time will be up. In Job chapter 1, we see that Satan had to present himself before the Lord God and he even had to ask for permission to torment Job. In the Gospel of Luke, we notice that Jesus said this, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith shall not fail. So the point is this, Satan always has to ask the Lord God before he does anything first. Hey now, I know exactly what you're thinking right now. You're thinking, well Joe, if Satan is under God's control, does that mean that God is responsible for the evil and the pain in this world? Doesn't that open lots of different questions? And the truth is, honestly, I don't understand all of these things myself. And you and I, we can either get super confused and throw out all of these questions, or we can just rest on the fact that we are not God, we will not understand everything, and the mysteries of God are too deep for us right now because we are just finite human beings. But then on the positive side, you could say, I'm gonna rest in this tremendous truth that nothing can happen to me without God's permission first. Let me share something that's gonna sound really silly, but I personally love open water swimming, and I love swimming out into deep lakes and just letting go of all of my worries. But then, as an anxious person, I can't always escape all of my worries. And sometimes when I'm out on the deepest part of the lake, I start having this concern, this anxiety. And you're gonna laugh at me for this, but I think, what is underneath me? What if there's a huge big catfish and it just sucks on my leg and then pulls me down under and I drown? Because I've watched programs like River Monsters where people are eaten alive by catfish and I start getting scared about those kind of things. But then, do you know what thought the Lord gives me, if you like, to combat that other thought of anxiety? He reminds me, I'm in control, Joe. And if a catfish is gonna get you, well, there's nothing you can do to stop it. But if a catfish isn't supposed to get you, which I'm more lean towards, then nothing is going to touch you. So my dear friends, whatever your anxiety is, whether it's a big one or a small one, just rest in the sovereignty of God, that Jesus Christ is still on the throne. We might not understand everything that's going on, but he has not stopped ruling and he's working all things together for good for those who are called according to his purposes. And lastly, number five, the last thing that Satan cannot do is Satan cannot win. Romans 16 verse 20 says this, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Satan is a defeated enemy. He was defeated when he was cast out of heaven with the other fallen angels and he was consigned to chains of eternal gloomy darkness until the day of judgment when all of the fallen angels, including Satan and including the men and women of this world who have also rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord be judged and cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. Jesus Christ 
defeated Satan when he rose from the dead. Death, sin and all of Christ's enemies were conquered when Christ showed that he was God incarnate, God in a skin, God in a flesh, and he beat the powers of darkness. So my dear friends, you might be scared of the devil, you might be scared of demons, and if that's you, I just wanna say, hide behind the Lord Jesus Christ because we have a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Just like when you go to school and perhaps the bullies are at school and they're gonna beat you up, you have a bigger brother who comes along and crushes all of those bullies. Well, I'll tell you something, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to crush Satan and all of his bullying friends and prove that he is the God worth worshiping. Now, there is one final thing that I actually nearly forgot to tell you, and it's this. Satan, in the book of Revelation, is also called this. He's called the accuser of the brethren. And at times, when I'm just sitting there, I sometimes get these nasty thoughts about myself. And I've got to ask myself this question. Has this thought come from the Holy Spirit, or has it come from the evil one, accusing me, trying to steal my joy from me, and make me doubt that God loves me? Well, if you ever get thoughts like that, I've got a video here, and it's all about guilt. I'm not sure if you've seen it before, but try watching it. I think you'll find it a blessing. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this YouTube channel, please do. We really would appreciate your friendship here at Off The Curb Ministries. God bless you all and thank you for watching.